Alright guys, I'd like to welcome you to the ultimate ranked climbing guide. I am going to be gathering information and the best tips and tricks from professional players, coaches, challenger players, multi-seasonal challengers, the best one tricks in the world. I'm going to be getting tips, tricks, and advice from myself and all the best players in the world. And I'll be sharing it with you guys. And I'm hoping that this video and maybe a series leading into multiple other videos will revolutionize League of Legends. Everyone that watches it should be way better by the time they finish this video. It's going to be insane, I really think so. Guys, be sure to leave a like if you want to see more educational content. But other than that, enjoy this video. It should be really good. Alright guys, so for the first game in this ultimate climbing guide, I'm going against a Darius. And since this is going to be based on a Akali uh, for the champion I'm playing, I'm just going to talk about what I picked and why. Obviously, there's going to be a different um, build or rune page depending on their team comp. And even though I'm going against a tanky champion top lane, I still felt the need to get Electrocute because their entire team comp, the people I want to be going after in this game are squishy. So really quick, we're just taking small trades here, and that's okay. Um, he has Halo Blades, he has Ignite, so what that means is versus a Conquer Teleport Darius, I have to be much safer. Um, but essentially, you never want to not be safe against Darius anyways. The way this matchup specifically works is you just have to always have either your W or your E available, unless you're killing him. Um, because otherwise, he's going to run you down and do so much damage, it's insane. But that's the rule of thumb against Darius. Always have some kind of escape. Uh, anyways, we're going to be going into this matchup now. Uh, one of the first and most important things I want to talk about is wave management at all stages of the game. Um, pretty much the basics of wave management is it's how many minions they have versus how many minions you have at which point in the lane. Top lane is obviously longer, so it's a lot easier to get ganked if um, you don't know what wave management is. Like right now, this guy clearly doesn't know what he's doing. He's auto attacking without purpose. And what that's going to mean is that I'm going to be able to have my jungler gank and he's just going to be overextended. Actually, I think he's just dead. Hold on. Alright, and I didn't feel like uh, flashing or continuing too hard. I don't know. I, those were probably greedy. I could have just. Maybe held Magnet, but I think he was going to flash if I didn't just ignite him right there. So I'm completely down for that, honestly. But anyways, the way it works is right now, see, I'm not auto-attacking. I'm waiting until the very end because I don't need to um, I don't need to shove this way to keep auto-attacking. It's just I see so many people do that. They're just auto, auto, auto. Like, I'm, they have no purpose. Um, I'm not going to be able to shove the way fast enough to get into the tower and then reset back to the middle. So what I want to do here is, even though I got the kill, I don't have teleport. I want to just farm at the very last second. Like, honestly, the best thing you can do is wait until your minion fires the kill shot onto the enemy minion. Oh, right there. Obviously, it's not, you're not, you're not going to get it perfectly every time. But as long as you're practicing the concept, that's all you can really ask for. Like, right there, I'm, I'm really not getting it right. But anyways, um, I am going to continue back in. Uh, thank you, Rosé, for the Prime. I'm going to continue right back in. Give you that. Auto W. And I'm going to run into this because it's a Darius matchup. And just continue to play uh, relatively safe. Um, I want to wait for my cooldowns because you never know what happens with Halo Blades. And he still has Ignite. He's still Darius. He will run me down if I make one mistake. So let's go ahead and just uh, continue on. And at this point... You could say because my wave is building, I would want to shove, but I actually want to wait until the next wave gets in and it builds one giant wave, and then I can crash both of those waves into his tower at once. Then I can get a big recall in while he has to farm multiple waves under tower, and he won't be able to shove back because he's going to have so many waves to deal with. Um, this is all going to make sense. We're going to keep going over it throughout this movie, so you're going to understand it fully by the end of it. Actually, I'm going to go for this. Alright, that might have been a little bit advanced for this class. But anyways, I have to go back. This is another thing. A very important topic. Very, very, very important. So please listen. Don't be greedy. Trust me, it's never worth it. It's never worth it. Um... The odds of him being there and killing you, and then Darius gets a lead, uh, or gets back in the game, it's just, it's not worth the uh, reward. The risk versus reward is not there. 
so it's just it's just not worth it so please do not be greedy just go back and deal with the messed up wave now that we are in a messed up wave two things can happen either one he freezes and we're seriously screwed we have no flash we have no ult but it looks like because we are only in platinum we'll see oh no he's actually gonna i think he might be freezing either way you want to ward first thing before you get back into the lane luckily i haven't awarded yet so it's a double ward um and i didn't need to use my wards earlier because i was in a spot where you know i was just i i kept the wave under my tower and i'm super comfortable playing imagine if i was under his tower look how much room there is to get ganked um it's just something you don't want to ever deal with and right now i do want to just try and get this wave shoved in and i could get ganked here honestly Okay, but we know Kha'Zix is bot lane. Um, something I want you guys to also practice is uh, find a timer that beeps on like a five second cooldown. If you This is super try hard and you don't have to do this, but it, it is good for climbing. If you care enough to climb, uh, I would assume because you're watching the video, but you know, something you could do, I'm gonna back up because I don't know where TF is. Uh, but anyways, you look and you have a timer that beeps every five seconds. And whenever it beeps, you take a quick peek at the minimap. You always know what's going on at all times. And honestly, it's kind of like another thing about the whole like having vision and you know using your wards properly is if you know Kazix or the enemy jungler is bot side and you're top lane, why would you even waste your ward? Also, I'm gonna fly right out of that. All right, um, and that's just another thing that there's so many things, small things that are really important because you know had I warded when Kazix was bot side, that would have waste potentially up to a minute of vision in the river that I could use to, you know, not get ganked. Later on, that could save me from a death very realistically. These are all seemingly small things that is what makes a player challenger or a pro versus, you know, whatever rank you're in, um, like, whatever, whatever ranks. Um, also, he's stacking MR, which is really smart. He's not an idiot. He, uh, the, another bad thing you could do is when you're behind is get damage. Um, actually, some challengers disagree with that, but anyways, we're gonna. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that is accurate in my opinion. I don't think you should get damaged. What, what you're just doing is not the worst idea. Hold on. Okay, we're fine. And now, I kind of want to be gold efficient right now and just get the boots. Um, another another concept, just over on the topic of concepts, is if you have a champion with a movement speed buff, if you have a champion with a dash that is low low cost, low cooldown. So, you know, not using like Ari ult. You don't wanna waste an ult to get back to lane. But you wanna be using your abilities to get back to lane just that little bit faster because it can get you the cannon minion that's gonna give you the level up one minion faster. That's gonna get you that two HP kill you wouldn't have gotten before. Uh, so many things that we're always thinking about uh, as high low players that low or low players do not think about. So let's go ahead and just wait right here. I have I have a reason to push, but I don't know where Kha'Zix is. And he's at the point where he has so much tankiness that I don't really want to... I don't really want to just jump him through my minions because I don't know where Kha'Zix is. And he's got enough tankiness to like kind of maybe 2v1 me. Uh, not to mention I don't know where TF is as well. Always got to keep that awareness. Okay, so he's bot side jungle. Um, I'm actually going to... Wait for this next wave, let it build up. And then we're gonna take them all all both all the waves at once. Maybe a little bit. But anyways, I'd rather be a little bit pushed out than had I shoved earlier, I would be under his tower for an extended amount of time. Let's go ahead and just I don't wanna use W here. Uh, I can TF, I don't know. We can maybe do this, honestly. Okay, the action is balling. No, the can oh. I should have been under the tower just to get the uh, plate, because if you're not under the in the tower attack range, you're not gonna be able to get the plate gold if you don't attack it. So I should have even tapped I should have either tapped it once, which wouldn't have made sense right there. And I do believe I do believe Kha'Zix might be in the area, but at this point I got the kill. Um, he used his pull, which is his 
Uh, yeah, he, he used spells and I, I didn't feel like it was, there was any pressure in me dying there. And, um, I think you can kind of just get the point of like, I don't give Darius good opportunities to kill me in lane. I'm literally fighting under my conditions. Um, and that's a really big part of playing a lane out is why would you fight when he has the opportunity to take a better trade and you don't? It's just, it just doesn't make sense. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. But it's just something you always have to be thinking about. It's like, will this trade end in, my, in a favorable result for me or him? Uh, and yo, Troy, thank you for the five months. Uh, and quick shout out to the stream. What's up, guys? I'm doing a ultimate guide to climbing. Um, and anyways, let's go ahead and just use our E back into the lane. I don't wanna use my W because I don't have my ult and I maybe should have used it, but I was kind of using chat to be honest. Okay, so now Kha'Zix is half health, he's mid lane. I have an opportunity to just like kind of fly in and at least deny him off the cannon. And this is actually something I wanna talk about too. Cannon wave is a really good opportunity to get a kill. Uh oh. Oh. See, that's the thing about Darius is, I don't. I think if I didn't flash that, I'd just die. Because um, he can literally run you down. His passive does an obscene amount of damage. And now I have to be careful until my uh, Shroud is back up. And my ultimate. Um, otherwise, TF can ult him. It's just very risky, and I don't want to die. Um, because you know what happens if I give Darius a kill? He gets two and a half kills worth of gold because of a shutdown. It's just not, I'm not doing it. Um, I refuse to let him back in the game. I want to keep my lead. And he just uh, went back, so I'm going to let my team know. Darius B. Uh, you know what? On to another concept. Oh, Caleb. Caleb number one. Thank you, man. Thank you for the uh, four months. Uh, another concept I want to talk about is team chat and all chat. Um, and this is a really, actually, a really fun social dynamic because there are definitely two very real ways to do it you can either mute all and honestly you should probably let your team know you're muting all and just say like like have a default message like it just saved in your notepad like sorry team i tilt easy going to slash mute all at the beginning of the game and that's pretty reasonable um or you can try your best to communicate with your team and this really just depends guys on your on your mental if you're a weak-minded person and we're gonna talk more about mental because it's so important for League of Legends too. Oh shoot, they're on they're on Rift Shroud. If you're if you're kind of weak-minded, I'm gonna teach you how to be stronger in this video. But for now, just go ahead and mute all um, because there's so much just unnecessary flame in this game. Hold on, hold on, let's go. Ahead. He's got tier two boots as well. I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this. Um, the only other option was I ult into the tower. And considering Darius isn't worth that much, and I am, I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about how to never get tilted either, because I think one of my biggest um, one of my biggest advantages as a Baron ranked is I so rarely get tilted. Um, usually if I get tilted, it's for content, to be honest. But uh, I get tilted sometimes on my main account, but usually I don't really care what my noob teams do. Go ahead and do this. Always gonna secure the cannon, not gonna waste a potential 70 gold. And right now, the question is, do I rotate late to help him? Because I just I just noticed pretty late. Or do I just take the first hurt of the game? And I think I'm gonna take the first hurt of the game. Okay. Hey CJ, thank you for the, the sub man. Anyways, we got the first turret. That's worth more than a kill. Especially since we got oh we didn't get a play, but we got 400 bonus gold. F your mom, ping my map all game. Your mom died. Hit your Q once. See, if this is the type of stuff that um, frustrates you, uh, slash mute. Now, I'm not... Normally for content, I might flame him back just for the content, but you know, I'm not going to do that because it's not optimal for climbing. You never want to give him a reason to rage quit. Some people are really weak-minded. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, sorry. Sorry is maybe a good idea to say. Um, it might be a little bit better than than not saying anything. And this is just like, if you're shameless, and you really just want to climb and you don't care about, I guess, being a, I don't know, a quote-unquote beta. I, I really don't see it that way, but some people might, if they have like fragile egos, um, then just go ahead and do that. 
just say sorry. Eh, who cares anyways? In my opinion, it's whatever. But on that note, um, I'm gonna ask, I should've done this earlier, I was just too busy talking about other stuff. Bot lane, can we swap please? This is a good time to swap since bot lane is a little bit behind. I can easily one shot the Twitch through Rakan. Um, a way a Kali can do that, wait, did I see a pink board? A way a Kali can do that is to just ult the Rakan and fly right over him. And then I can get a range to Twitch and just hit him with the one shot combo. And also I will say, if you want to climb with a Kali and you haven't already heard about my ultimate Kali guide, which you probably have, but if you haven't, um, make sure you search that. I'll leave a link in the description as well. Oh, that was really bad. Uh, I was thinking if I ult over, but no, it's not a good idea. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this. Nothing here for me. I think there might be something if he... Yep. Yeah. We got it. Not good. Okay, that was good. You have to get out of the tower range because you cannot be invisible under tower. I'll tell you that much, that's for sure. Holy crap. Oh, man. I'm like... Yep, and I'm not trying to see any kills. I'm just gonna do what I can to make sure they die. And you know what? Kane's got the kill. It's whatever. You could argue um, if you think you're. I see. I, I, I didn't think that. This is just really good for me. I let him get the kill. I don't think he's gonna freak out. Sometimes they do, and you know, Solo Q is so fragile that I actually was a little bit worried to take that uh, away from him. The boob up. I guess the people don't know that uh, Blue is good on Akali uh, or people with energy, but you know what? I just went for it. I, I, Blue is just so good on Akali or any champion with energy, really. Alright, so I think we can talk about some stuff that actually I asked Charisma about. If you don't know who he is, he's the best king in the world. He has usually two or three accounts in Challenger. Right now he has two. Uh, every season he has two or three for the past like five years in a row. Um, he gave some good tips that I kind of want to pull up while we're playing this one. But I'm also gonna just go for this. I'm gonna go for a gun blade. And got his flash, I'm gonna ping that. And that is going to be a five minute cooldown, I think. So that's 23 minutes and 40 seconds it'll be left. This guy's dead. Look at that, look at that. I love, oh my god, I love Ravenous Hunter. I heal 700 with five stacks of Ravenous Hunter and a gun board. 700, I don't even, I have 1600 health for that. All right, that is good. So let's go over this list really quick. Um, so, these are, a lot of these are mental, but they honestly are, there's a lot of things. They make you play better. They are a lost streak prevention and stuff like that. But what we got is, um, you want to get a good tonight rest. That's the first thing you mentioned. Um, you got to make sure you stretch your hands and your wrists. Just not that much, but you know, you got to do, you should probably do something in between games. Um, so that's definitely something you mentioned. I'm actually going to go back because I can pick my team off. Uh, we have really nothing to go for. I don't even want to fight this because I have no flash or ult. I'm just going to let him die. And we're going to continue on towards... Um, against their team comp. I mean, we have a nice lead, so it doesn't really matter. I think I'm just going to go for a um, Rabidons because it's always a good option. Never bad. Anyways, we got a good Zynus Rest, a wide awake. Uh, you should be wide awake, so you're mentally doing well. Uh, stretch your hands. And I think this is really important. I've talked about this several times as well. But you want to always, you want to have three champions at most, at most, um, for one role. And then, you know, you should probably have one or two of those champions be available for your secondary role. So if you're mid top, 
um, you know, you want to play, pick three mid laners and make one, at least one of them be able to be played top lane, like Akali. Akali's a very good versatile champion, by the way. You should totally play her. And I'm not actually going to do this. Um, but, um, yeah, you want to just play one to three champions in one role, and then you want to just watch someone who's good at them, like a challenger player that plays a champion, and just study exactly what they do, copy their builds, because trust me, they know how to build better than you. I know that might seem ridiculous, but they really do. What? Okay, yeah, these, these challenger players are really good. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and... All right, video's over right now. Anyways, uh, yeah, you wanna pick three champions. Uh, it's just, it's gonna be the way to go. If it's a jungler, you wanna copy their their uh, jungle routes, their items, their rune pages. Um, most champions have a guide, and I think Twitch is right there. I need help, I'm gonna die. Oh man, I definitely butchered that. Definitely butchered that one. And Super Pops 01 with the tw with the th four months. Thank you, man. Okay. Um. But yeah, that's just let's just move on to the next thing, honestly. Okay. So, um, the most important thing is, and this is actually very true. This is something that literally only challenger players know. I swear, it's, it really feels like it is you need to know when to stop playing and how to deal with a loss. I think a lot of people are bored or they just want they want to get, like chase that lost LP. It's kind of like gambling in a way. You chase your losses and they just keep playing when they're pissed off and tilted. The, it's even worse than chasing your losses and gambling because when you do it in League of Legends, you're going to do worse the next time. There is no such thing as like the fury of or the pain of loss and having these superpowers. You're going to do worse because you're not going to think at the same level as you, or like a greater level as before, you're gonna be playing at a worse level. Um, so really, just understand when you're frustrated and stop playing. I, that has to be the most important thing. Actually, I think he mentioned that was the most important thing. Yep, yep, mental game and knowing when to stop losing is the most important thing he mentioned. And yeah, a lot of people like won't go to bed on a loss or, yeah, we got, we got people in the chat saying that too. Um, you just need to do it, otherwise you're gonna be an inferior gamer. You're never gonna learn how to play from behind because you're gonna be too busy being tilted about it. I really don't like this at all. Okay, I'm dead again. The worst part is my Zonius just came up. Not that it would matter too much to be honest. We still got some kills out of it. Okay, I think honestly that was not bad. Although already to get shut down. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna be the most important thing is learn to play from behind. And honestly at this point I'm just talking instead of focusing. So let's go back to this game and then we will continue on for the next one. Oh, and they surrendered. Alright, well when we get into the start of the next game I'm going to... Uh, talk more about different concepts and stuff like that so I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright guys we are resuming the ultimate climbing guide in the mid lane. This is my home so I can share so much insight on everything not just the matchups but uh, how to play the lane. So right now against Kassin he presses Q you can't avoid it but then you wait for it to be off cooldown you wait for the shield to be gone and then you go ahead and Q and uh, trade him right back. Uh, obviously this is maybe a little bit of quality dependent but most champions to be honest play the same way. Like he's gonna throw his Q out and then you just gotta deal with it. The thing about um, mid lane and all lanes to be honest is there is another concept that I want to talk about. It's called tracking the jungler. And unfortunately, I didn't do that because uh, I was talking in my stream. But the way you do that is you. Oh, well, it's hard because it's Shaco to begin with. But also, um, I just want to hit two first before I rogue for this. This is okay. I knew it. I knew it. 
Echo is in no danger, and they always rotate to their invading jungler to help if they think that you're uh, invading. So what I did there is I just waited with my level 2 versus the Kassadin. I do far more damage, and knowing that I do far more damage, I am just going to go in on him instead of wasting a potential crap load of time and, um, you know, just chasing after a Shaco. Because what's the point of chasing after Shaco anyways? I, I get to him, and then he just jumps over a wall and it goes any direction he wants while he's invisible. Not happening. Um, anyways, so what you want to do is whenever you know where the jungler is, uh, you want to try and keep track of where he would be. It's kind of important that you play at least a few games of jungle if you're very new, just so you kind of get the whole point of jungling. Like, you know, usually people start on their bottom buff to get a leash from bot lane, then they'll go all around. So, like, around three and a half minutes, they'll be ganking top side, and that's when you know, like, if Shaco didn't do his stuff there, I'd be really afraid to be this Udir and be so pushed out top lane right now. Um, so let's go ahead and jump the queue. And I don't have sums, but at the same time, I still have my Shroud. So I'm not in any real kind of danger to be playing aggro here. So I'm going to continue playing aggressive. If I do end up taking damage from Shaco, I can use a potion. I want to use my W to proc electrocute and then back up a little bit. And right here... I'm, you know, just wait patiently the last hit, and uh, this is called, you know, just dropping a casual freeze. If you don't know what a freeze is, it's just when you keep the minion wave right under your tower, or really wherever you want, but freezing under tower is, you know, the wave is frozen, it's not moving. And this is, we're going to go into more detail on freezing lanes later on, but, yeah, it's really simple. It's just, I think we've talked about it already, you just have to wait until the minions fire the kill shot, like right here. Uh, but I'm not going to miss the cannon. I'm never going to risk a cannon. I'd rather push a little bit harder than risk um, missing a cannon. I'm not Baker. My confidence isn't one trillion. And also this guy's here, so... He's dead. Nice. And he had no flash. I don't think Echo even knew that because... You know, something I should have told you guys and but didn't do myself is I should have pinged the jungler, or pinged that this guy, rather, um, pinged that cast and used his flash, but I didn't. I have no reason to fear this. Um, it doesn't matter if three people come. I can kill him so easily here. Okay, so now we know the range on this, we can just fly right away. I'm not worried because I am pretty far ahead. I know Kassadin's not there. Kassadin, even if he shows up, he's not a real champion, I'll tell you that much. Until he gets six, this like he doesn't exist, to be completely honest with you. So I'm gonna go ahead and play aggressive here. And another thing I didn't mention until it was too late, but it was in my head. Oh, I gotta get better at this. Um, I knew I was one minion from six. So what I did was I tried to weaken him a bit before I hit 6, because when you hit level 6 as a Kali, obviously they're going to be a little scared, so they're going to run away. And also I need to... Okay, this is fine, this is fine. I'm going to go ahead and just... I'm just going to go ahead and recall here. I can't imagine he's going to stop my recall in time, because there's a big wave here. But yeah, I knew uh, that I was 1 minion from 6, so I weakened Kassadin with some trades. I went on him, took some minion damage even if needed. Um in preparation so that when I hit 6, he'll be low enough health, so even though he's really close to his tower, I can just finish him off. Because, you know, if he was full health, I don't think I could have done that. So, that's good. Let's go ahead and continue on. Um, and then, yo, Bacon Titty, thank you for this, the 4 months, man. Really appreciate that. I don't, I don't want to miss subs, even though, it's, yeah, I guess I'm streaming this, I'm streaming this video, I don't want to miss subs, so I apologize if I do, guys, but I don't think I will. I'll do a good job. Um, Anyways, let's go ahead and just, hmm. I think the move here is we want to just wait until our ult is up. I don't want to push too hard. Hopefully we can have our ult back up before he hits six, because he is healthy, he's going to have a, a six. It's going to be really easy for him to get away from ganks. So let's just try our best. Um, and I want to talk about a few different wards you could do. 
Um, but let's go ahead and... Ah, oh man. I, I think we're going to have to maybe look for a dive here. Yeah, I think we look for a dive. I think we do it. I think we do it. I'm going to cue that and then... I just... I don't know if this is a good idea at all, but... Okay. He was level 5. I need to press my lead. I want to press my lead as hard as possible. If he hits 6 in the middle of that, I am not going to continue because it's just, it's not happening. It's not happening. Um, but because he didn't, I'm going to um, go back up. Alright. Okay, we're, gonna, we're just going to go back here. So, let's go ahead and... Oh. That's going to be the one mistake for the game. Smiley face. Alright, let's go ahead and just uh, go back really quick. Okay. Um, oh, we got a troll. Oh, yeah. Okay, well... Is there anything to talk about? I might just move on to the next game, to be honest. If there is going to be some trolling. But anyways, uh, until we know for sure. Yeah, I think... It... Yeah, okay, she's AFK mid. Alright guys, uh, we're going to cut it at that point for this game. I'll see you in the next one. Alright guys, we are back into this with another game. And I went for Conquer this time. And I want to explain really quick why. Um, although they're not necessarily a bunch of tanks... They have a low burst and high sustain damage between uh, champions like Darius, who is kind of tanky. Uh, Pantheon's likely going to be going Bruiser, Death Stance build. TF is likely going to be tanky. Sivir, Janna, hard to get on top of. Um, it's going to be a long extended fight, and Conquer is much better than uh, Electrocute in those types of situations. So, you know, we're going for the uh, Conquer build this game. I would go for this page every single time. Unless I'm going against a melee champion, in which case I would go for um, the healing one. I think it's called Taste of Blood. But against TF, like, when am I ever going to be hitting him to do damage? It's going to be not enough for it to be worth it. And I can just safely, you know, fight under my own conditions against TF. So we're just going to go ahead and, on that note, just... Uh, And I'm really just like trying to keep myself in a comfortable spot. So here is another concept I want to talk about. It's called Prio or Priority, um, depending on you know if you're a cool kid that uh, shortens stuff. So having mid priority means that you are the one that is able to roam before the other person for mostly the two scuttle crabs at spawn at like 320 or whatever. But you know it could also be like if you're getting invaded or the enemy's invading. It's whoever can rotate faster has the priority. Um, and while both people technically can rotate at the same time, if there's a big wave, um, say like this wave comes in and I'm under my tower farming, imagine I have to rotate and I have to just ditch two waves worth of farm. That is really, really, really bad and honestly not even worth it a lot of the time. Like, as crazy as that sounds. And I don't know if Darius should finish him, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, keep this wave in a good spot right here. And now he's playing under my terms. He's got one potion left. I haven't even used a potion. Alright, and see how he is just already in a bad spot because of my lane positioning. And i got to prepare this one. He's dead. Wait for the flash. Classic. I just got an extra summoner out of that, so. Yo, and we got VT Jason TV. Thank you for the tier one, man. Uh, okay. Gonna... Mm, I think. What do I do here? This is the question, because he has TP. I don't think he's going to use it because of the way the lane's out. But. I don't know if I necessarily have much of an option, but to... Oh yeah, we're, kind of, we're totally going to kill this. Well, 
I'm actually gonna go for the TF um, and just push the wave because I really have no reason not to. Um, uh, I just wanted to get the wave under tower and I think he actually could have frozen, but he didn't uh, He didn't think to go run up in front and block the minion. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop a quick ward right there just to see if TF rotates down. And let's look for a reset. Um, for champions like Akali or, you know, if you're gonna go a mage that Rushes, Ludens, you always want to go for Lost Chapter first as fast as possible for that mana sustain. Champions like Akali, where it's either one or the other item, I just go for whatever costs the most gold. Um, and I'll talk about that, actually, because it's really important. Oh, whoops. Uh, anyways, so, yeah, really quick, just might as well talk about this and make you think in a certain way. Bilge Water versus Revolver. Um, number one, Bilge Water is worth more gold in terms of stats and power. But most importantly, um, the reason is... I can take a trade with Bilgewater, and then I can heal it up, and that, and that way I'm going to be taking a better trade overall. Um, so like what might have been a even or bad trade, I can actually heal up into the point where I have more health than him now. So that's something to think about, um, stuff like that. So many concepts, it's just crazy. I didn't mean to, I, I didn't mean to ignite him. Oh, that was actually really bad. Makes me sad actually. Yeah, I um I did not need to do that. I'm not letting him freeze either. Get into the tower, goddammit. And now at this point I'm just gonna keep autoing. I have a potion shugging. I have a little bit of spell vamp. Just go ahead and try to get the angle between all the minions with a Q. And now I have no ult cooldown, there's no action going on, top is dead, bot lane's not even there. Either way, even if they were there, I don't have my ultimate, I have a thousand gold, that's a lot of gold to sit on. I'm just going to go back really quick and take a better lead. Um, yeah, because you know, we, we have so much gold, like, uh, getting 40 AP this early is extremely beneficial, because we just went from 18 to 58, you know, it's almost triple um can you type question marks in all chat we can talk about that we can talk about that um so i talked about this in a different game but they ended up remaking as we got first blood by the way it feels bad but there's something that is pretty much the dark side of climbing and it's when you tilt your enemies and i know like some really sensitive soft people are gonna be like you shouldn't be promoting toxicity well, it's I don't I actually don't like doing that, but at the same time, a simple question mark in all chat while taunting or tainting the community is pretty useful for your own game, uh, potentially tilting them uh, towards playing worse. I'm just gonna th leave it at that. Um, I personally only flame or troll, like troll in, in chat. Obviously, I never troll in game when they are flaming me or they call me a noob or. They say my champion's broken, then I'll just mess with them. But, you know what? It is what it is. Mute, the mute button exists for a reason, so. Also, I grew up with Call of Duty, so I'm not as soft as um, half of this community or more. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go for the plate. I can't rotate against a Twisted Fate. It's just not how life works. <laughs> uh, he's got, you know, hold this right here. Got as many other things as possible. There's like only a few specific angles, and you'll get them down as you practice. Um, I think I'm getting ganked here, but I want to be in range for this plate. Okay. I do believe really Twisted Fates right there. Okay. And I'm just going to keep up the aggression. I suppose... Hold on. I need to know if Pantheon ulted because... I actually don't think they can even kill me, to be completely honest with you. I think I'm just gonna go for this kill. Must get plate. Damn it. I didn't even get the plate and I took a tower shot. That's not good. Okay, let's just go ahead and continue.
Ouch, I have been hit by the AoEs. I think what I'm gonna do here is just rush this blade out. And then I don't I don't yeah, I think he's just gonna recall on this. I can actually mm, never mind. So we don't want to dive this because it's Pantheon. Only reason. Any other champion. I don't know, maybe like a fiddle six we don't want to dive. Champions that can like just teleport in at a moment's notice and just catch you off guard. Super sketch to go against, but I see Pantheon's bot side, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go for this. I messed that up, I'm gonna have to leave it. I should be completely fine because top end's over there. And now I'm just gonna recall. I don't know at all. Oh, he got the kill. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, Pantheon didn't ult fast enough to really like keep track of me, so he didn't bother. And you know, I he flashed, so that's nice. But ideally, I should have waited maybe another half a second just to see, because a lot of times they do know that Kali's ult takes a second, a second and a half, two seconds to cast the second part, and then they flash around that time. So I should have maybe waited another half a second. I had the health to do it, and then seen if he flashed, and then chased that flash with my R2 and redirect it at a normal angle. But I didn't, so. Hindsight, right? Okay. Also, if you are if you want to learn how to play ranked with Akali specifically, um, make sure you type in it. Uh, or sorry. Go to my Ultimate Akali Guide if you want to learn how to do combos like that or tower. Any combo ever, I talk about in the guide. Um, if you aren't set on a champion, if this video hasn't already sold you on Akali, um, I will say... I know it's a weird flex, or, but okay or whatever, but I literally have probably the best guide on YouTube for any champion. Um, every matchup, you'll be you'll be in really good hands if you play Akali. And right now, I think TF ulted. They don't have a choice, but I think they have to go for me mid. It's tough, I'm not sure. I don't think they're going for me mid. I'm gonna trade this is a guaranteed, like that's 610 gold. The whole point of getting Rift usually early is to even, is to try and get the first tower. Uh, I'm not gonna bother flashing, I don't think. Okay. All right, we should be able to kill him, but the, I don't know, he's got a lot of MR. If, if Teemo, yeah, if Teemo will be here in a bit. I'm using a potion just in case. Oops. Nice, triple slows. Three different slows from my Q is the way to go right there on that one. I'm giving Teemo time to catch up. My Gunblade just came up. I don't think it was up during that. And we got the Black J with the tier 1. Thank you, man. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pick up some stuff right now. Um, I think because of our lead we have acquired and the fact that they are a nice little... Hmm, they have AP and AD. Um, we're going to just go for the Morellos, or the, uh, the early magic pen. Like, this is a really good start for a really good core item to going into your mid game. Um, but, you know, item builds, all that stuff is in the ultimate color guide as well. I think I'm just gonna keep talking about the ultimate color guide. I hope you guys heard of it. No, but seriously though. Um, yeah, at this point, it's just a matter of, like, paying attention to how to win the game. Dragons are good. Um, bot lane could always be ganked. If you can't continue pushing mid, you either take objectives or you help your team get fed. Can't take objectives because they're down, so I mean, what does that leave, right? Should be okay. I don't want to get hit by the gold card, so I'm gonna back out. If we're patient, we get our we get our W back up. Oh, oh my oh well. Oh no, you didn't want to do that. <laughs> Imagine if she just died because she tried to escape a tower shock two two hours later. Alright, let's 
go ahead and press Q on this wave. And I'm using my E as much as I can on minions to heal up because it's single target spell vamp is insanely strong for healing. Like we got we got 64 just off of one half of our E. If we did it twice, we'd have gotten another 64. Oops. Mess that up. Slow him. Oh, mess that up. Alright, lots of fails. Um, let Epic fail as the children would say. I'm a boomer, so I don't know. Oh god. Oh, thank you. I really didn't want to fly into that with nothing up. I think I'm pretty happy this failed. I'm actually going to wait here. I can fight this in three seconds with my ult up. God damn it, just come up. That works. Okay. I had to wait. I was I was really looking for my ult cooldowns and whatnot. Um, and all my cooldowns, rather. But that works. But I think you can tell the theme of that fight. You... You use your spells and you stay just in range to not get hit by them and then once your cooldowns are back up you go for it just out of the range just out of it i don't want to get hit by the gold cards or anything like that but i do want to kill them may have, um, what's that saying that old people say? Bitten off more than I can chew? Oh, that's a little unfortunate. Alright, recap time. What do we build? What do we build? Because this is important too. We gotta think before we spawn. Um, AD with healing. The healing part's important because of, um, Morellos. The consideration of if we build Morellos. You build it depending on if they heal or not. Anyways, AD decently fed. AD decently fed. AP Okay, AD not fed, it's in support with healing. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna get a Azonius here because we have enough gold, because it's a really good item for Akali, just the active and everything about it. But I am going to, and had I not had enough gold for the full Zonias, I would have gotten Morellos. But because it's a complete item with a really strong active, we're gonna be going for the Zonias here. And now ideally we wouldn't be at top when the third dragon's spawning, but this is solo queue and you gotta live a little bit, right? You gotta have some fun sometimes, I suppose. I'm gonna go ahead and steal this kill. Uh, I didn't, I tried to gunblade it. But apparently, my gunblade isn't fast enough even though it's instant. <clears throat> Alright. Alright, so let's go ahead. Uh, yeah, we can have funds, it's 2v1, so I'm just gonna go. Yeah, I, mean, I know I'm fed, so I can just do that. Um, and also, I'm not going to do something silly like that. Or It's not silly. It's more so actually just a free kill. But you don't want to do stuff like that if their team is up and they have potential CC. Like Pantheon Compress W Mute. <clears throat> stuff like that. Where the heck did he go? He's probably here. What? Now this is potentially risky. Yeah, at this point honestly the game is looking pretty free free. And I think something we could talk about as well is uh, another thing that Charisma mentioned. Um, and that's like the whole dragon versus Rotarial thing. Ooh, this is kind of important. Yeah, I think this is really important. So there are websites you can use to like check if your teammates are off roll or like main roll, whatever, like in champion select, um, and just see if they're on their main champions and stuff like that. And I used to think that <clears throat> dragons are just always more important than Rift Herald unless the first turret is up. But a better way of thinking about it is which side of the map you want to play around. Um, this is specifically for jungle and mid, because of the ones that like are the you know ones that are rotating depending on situation. If you're like, I I guess, I guess you could say, if your bot lane is like a 80% win rate duo and your top lane is auto filled, you're you're probably gonna wanna 
you know, play with your bot lane, right? Because they're the better players. Uh, you got you got a Vayne one trick on your team that's got two kills. You're probably gonna want to play with her. Um, I think that's something important too. You can definitely think about. <clears throat> Honestly, at this point, we're just spitting facts and, and information. So retain whatever you can. Maybe watch this video more than once. To be completely honest. Damn, there's nothing to ult to, but I really want to have some fun and fight. You know, I think we won, but this this could be, I don't know, it, it might be a close game, who knows. I I meant to Zonia's, and e, I went to E out in Zonia's, so I don't have to, ah, okay. You know what, whatever. Alright, on to the next game with more information, more challenger players giving us the knowledge. Alright guys, really quick, I played a game where I had a teammate go AFK, so I didn't use it as a video, I stopped commentating, but I got a Penta and I wanted to share it with you guys, so here it is. Oh shit! No way. Fuck yeah, I got a Penta. <laughs> okay, I hope you didn't mind. Back to the educational stuff. Alright guys, we are going to be doing one more game for this part, and we're going to be sharing tips from a multi-season challenger, former pro player, uh, Bobkin. He is the best LeBlanc in the world. He's a primarily mid lane player, obviously, since he plays LeBlanc. And he has given us a bunch of really, really good tips. So I'm going to go ahead and be sharing those. And some of them are the same or similar, but, uh, you know, it's to be expected because all great minds think alike, right? So, uh, the first thing we got is, and this is just a really casual farm lane. There's not really much we can do here, so I'm just going to be pretty much just just casually afk farming this because it's a bad matchup for us uh until around level three so you first thing you want to do is focus on a small champion pool and get really good at them two or three champions you can literally get the challenger with one champion so there's no reason to have like a 10 champion pool and i completely agree with that uh, i don't understand why people do choose to have 10 champions it's just impossible to get good at them um he says you should take a break if you hit three losses in a row. I like that a lot. Do not rage queue. You only tilt and feel bad. You won't be able to play your 100%. Also agree with that. All right, let's go ahead and... What are we reading throughout this? But He's almost at 100 uh, of his percentage passes, so I kind of need to just knock it out of by him. I'm fine. It is Ignite's down. That... Uh, is questionable. I was, yeah, I'm not really in danger. I just don't know what he's doing, to be honest. Um, but works with me. I should be able to hit four. I don't think I should hit first. This guy has no flash, he's under my tower. Um, oops, I pinged the wrong person. My bad. I pinged his subs like he's like, like BM wise. Alright. That guy slowed. He's just gonna die to the Q. Or I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, kill him myself because honestly, he's taking too long. I gave him a chance, but you know what? He didn't. Yeah, okay, I forgot to hit. Yeah, I mean, well, that's okay. Uh, he definitely definitely played that pretty questionably. Anyways, um, we're gonna go ahead and shove this wave in. And do this twice. I'm gonna go ahead and press W and just get this all shoved in. Whoops. Whoops, times two. Will we miss another minion? If we do, I may have K. Okay, I mean, okay, you don't wanna do that if you're trying to win. Perfect. And he is not going to be stopping my recall with that many minions in the way. So, perfectly enough, what we're gonna do now is talk about the next thing. So, well, we got this. Uh, next thing he mentions is too many laners, too many people don't do this enough, but if you're a laner, look at the minimap as often as you can, see where they leash, you will be able to tell uh, where the jungler is on the map with the, without even having wards sometimes if you pay attention enough. And we talked about this earlier, but tracking the jungler. So you can avoid dying to very obvious jungle ganks and know when to play safe when the enemy jungler is near to you. This is very true. So like if you knew bot lane leashed blue, uh, for example, and let's say they have like a graves jungle, 
uh, you know around three and a half minutes as a mid laner, he's gonna be top side jungle. Well, you wanna be around, you wanna be hovering this bot side. There's no way he can gank you without you running away. If that's the case. So that's something cute. Uh, he also mentioned dual Q is a great way to climb. If your dual partner is not holding you down, abuse it. Uh, since it's in the system, and I completely agree with that as well. Um, that's sad. He's gonna he's gonna die on that one, but I can't do anything with it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just let it push uh, into us. Ideally, we don't kill these minions that are two HP, even though this one has two HP, because um, it's just another minion to push into our favor. But I can kill him here quite easily. Yeah. I hate that. I hate that. He's got the freaking... Oh, oh, he's got everything he needs to live. Don't like to see that. But yeah, he's got that that one or nullifying magic orb or whatever the nonsense. Um, I could probably just be calling just let it be right here. All right, it's just gonna push the tower. All right, we're gonna actually look for the recall, and this is something you usually do not do as a mid laner. Um, you do this as a top laner, but if the wave is in a, did a really good spot right under your tower, you can just keep the wave right there for a bit. This might crash a little bit, but now I'm gonna have items. Um, I think the risk versus reward was good right there. Um, and then another thing he mentions is taking advantage of the dodge system. He goes on to people like, if people like are picking Ghost Nunu because they don't get their roll, you just gotta be the bigger person and dodge. And it's true because you're not gonna win, obviously, right? But you know, at the end of the day, sure, you're all gonna lose LP and the guy who didn't get his way lost, or you can just dodge. Just saying, which one do you prefer? It's up to you, do you wanna climb? I think we both know the answer then. Um, it's not risk carrying those games, just dodge until you get a normal game. So like, if you have, like, honestly, I would say even if you have five AD or five AP, or like a full AD team comp, full AP team comp, unless you have a smurf that's gonna carry, I would definitely recommend just dodging that as well. Team comp is doomed. Thank you. We lost the cannon, but we got the soul of the rumble. Why you sent my man? Dude. Guys, I'm trying to make a video. Stop stop calling me a simp, okay? Sorry. Sorry, YouTube. I'm, I'm being flamed by my Twitch chat. Because, you know, this is why I prefer YouTube. I like my YouTube more than you guys. I, I hate you, Twitch chat. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I hate you guys. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alright, let's go back really quick. Um, Alright, let's move on to his next thing while we continue on. So, yeah, dodging. Next thing we got, in-game-wise, abuse roaming. Uh, roaming is the best way to climb... As you put out immense pressure on the map, never try to freeze in a lane in solo queue as it's not viable in solo queue. It's only good for high level competitive plays, and we're going to elaborate on that since we just froze. Um, always just try to push your ways and help your jungler roam way higher chance of winning. So this is dependent on the champion. Uh, for example, a champion like Akali is not strong without level 6 or without her ultimate, so you should uh, definitely not just should definitely not try to shove and fight uh, without like ult if, unless you have a lead. But at this point, he's absolutely correct. We are not going to be freezing. Um, unless there's nothing to gank or nothing to do. We're just going to be... Um, we're going to be only freezing if we can kill him in lane. So it's like, if you can kill him in lane for sure, then we go for it. But if not, then yeah. We definitely shove and roam. And at this point... Ooh. Hey. Alright, cool. I actually got a little like train back to my mini wave. Um, but yeah, it's not a general rule of thumb is definitely nice. I think that's what he was going for. But you definitely there are situations when you want to just play the lane out. All right, what we're gonna do here is auto this m twice, three times, four times. Yep. 
boots. Super annoying. Super freaking annoying. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be just... you got to be twisting my balls with a freaking... With the Allen wrench. Alright, that's good. Good job. Good job. Right there. 69 CS. There is no better side of winning this game. Alright. Oh my gosh. That was just... That was just something else right there. Okay. Anyways, that's good. So yeah, those are the tips from the Rink 1 LeBlanc Bobkin. Uh, you got, he has a uh, Twitch and a YouTube as well. I'll probably link all their stuff. Uh, him and Charismai. They're going to be the guests with their advice from this episode. But guys, I think I'm going to make this like a five-part thing. Um, where we're doing educational content and we share tips and stuff on how to climb from the best players in the world. Uh, leave a like if you want to see more. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more. That's very important as well. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how the video does. But we have, I know, at least 10 to 15 challenger players that would love to help you guys. Um, former coaches, pro players, all that stuff. Okay, we're gonna go... I'm gonna... Ah, he sees me. Damn it. I didn't miss a minion. I missed one. He saw his ult, I believe. So with that information, I'm just not gonna... I, I don't know if he has ult. I, don't, I think he does. Otherwise, I don't think he'd even try to fight me. So assuming that, I don't want to fight. Yep, he does. Well, I mean, he got like a he got like a few orbs out of me for his passive, but that's it. First time you stream, love your calling. What's up? What's up, SK or SC rule? Okay. Um. Okay. All right. So at this point. I think it's a closer game than normal, um, but we have a lead, which is nice. You should pretty much always have a lead once you get the hang of the champion you're playing. This is really just comes down to, um, these are the benefits of playing a champion that you're familiar with, is every matchup becomes easier. When the jungler comes, you can do more. You're gonna make sure you're doing the maximum, the most you could do, the maximum, as they say. Um, but at this point, yeah, we're gonna shove and roam, because this guy's just under tower. He's, he's playing very slow, very safe, so. Although, there is a plate with my name on it. And you know what? We just gotta dive him. I think, yeah, I think the thing is, as well, a Kali is a champion, you can literally just do this and say, no, fuck it. Um, huh. I usually don't dive, tower dive, when it's two people under tower, but I felt like it. Okay, um, <clears throat> yeah, I knew I could just one-shot rumble, so technically it's going to become a 1v1 at that point, and that's me versus a, you know, a moderately fed cane, but I'm Conqueror Kali, so another benefit of Conqueror as a Kali. I don't... Yeah, at this point we can probably just roam. We got we got the mid lane turret. Um, can I dive? Probably... Probably. I'm gonna have my ball lane push, because you don't want to just like... Okay, yeah, yeah, we're going for it. Wait for, the, wait for the turret. That way we can position ourselves better. Ulta in two one. Okay. <laughs> it 
Let me just take tower. Honestly, right there, I think I wasted two or three seconds um, running to the brush because there's no one to stop me. I don't think there's any chance Kane will even try to 1v1 me. There's Actually, there is no chance, right? Because why would he? So, in that situation, I actually wasted a few seconds. And once again, I know I know it seems ridiculous. Who cares? It's two seconds. I'm probably going to lose an extra minion because of that. Um, or I might get to Rift Herald two seconds too late and not stop them. But you never know. Anyways, you, you guys get the point. Every second is important. Alright, I can't. If Caleb really wants you banned, just DM me if you want one more chance. Okay. I mean, this is just like pointless to even try. Okay. Although, once again, probably should just kill him. I think this game is pretty safely over, but once again, I've seen people that are boosting. And they just like, even in like freaking like diamond, they don't waste any time. They'll literally just kill you. People will stop and like start like spamming mastery, and they're just like, no, no, you're just gonna die. I'm moving on to the next objective. Actually, it's funny. Uh, the game right before this, wait, you know, I shouldn't even mention the pentakill because it's not gonna be in the video. Um, ch check out my stream if you ever want to see some cool stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, just continue on here. You get money for being a mod? Yeah, I, I pay um, seven hundred thousand dollars a week. Okay, uh, at this point, we're just looking at a standard close. Um, what we want to do here is not be caught out. Yeah, I think we're going to reset for a dragon. I, we could maybe get the, the bottling tower. Okay, well, I guess we're going for it. I have so much gold that I don't want to do it, and also, yeah, that was a bad idea. Oh, okay. Maybe not, maybe not. I think, okay, because they're all top lane, it's not so bad. I feel like if we, like, we could keep going, but if I just bought items, and we reset, and then we continued on forward, it would be pretty guaranteed. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go for a blue elixir here, and we're just gonna win with the next few minutes. Extra damage. I only get blue elixir when I'm very far ahead, and I think I can win either a fight for a serious objective, like Baron, or win the actual game uh, on the next, on, within like the next few minutes. Almost got that. Professor Clem, more like S plus Kalia, jeez. Um, guys, there's so many, there's so many there's things that high level players think of and different concepts and mechanics that can be executed in game um, that I want to share. I think I'm just going to keep on... I think I want to put multiple parts to this and just like really have different topics for each part. And uh, I feel like if I had a series, like I always feel like, I feel like watching this video, if you guys have gotten this far, will already make you play way better. I'm not gonna lie. 
I'm really bummed out about that. <laughs> I think if I hit my E, or he didn't have flash, I actually think I really would have meant it there. Oh man. <sighs> I'm actually really, really bummed out about that. Like, like, like 8 out of 10. Bummed out. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> Alright, well, I think at this point it's pretty simple. We have to get a Penta. You know what? We've had Professor Educational for the entirety of the video. Now it's time for a Professor Montage play. Um, throw everything you see out of the books, or, or out the window, rather. Wait, or they just surrender and we don't get to have a oh. Well, you know what? There was a lot of plays regardless in this game. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, wait, whoops. Please be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments if you want to see another one. I have so many challenger friends, coaches, pro players, everything, all the above that are, are down to help. I can help get you guys to whatever rank you want to be. Just let me know in the comments if you want to see it more. And thanks for watching and have a good day. Peace out.